Hello everyone, welcome to the free beginner rigging course in Blender. You might have heard that rigging is one of the most complex and challenging steps in the 3D animation process. Don't worry, follow me step by step, and you'll see how easy and understandable this seemingly difficult task can be. In this course we will rig Luxo JR, a character from Pixar which is very appealing and useful. Our plan is to get familiar with the tools and settings in the software that help us create a proper rig for our object. During this project, we will get to know the necessary tools for rigging step by step. No need to worry, by the end of this course, you'll be able to start your own project. I will be here with you to answer any questions or challenges you might have. In this episode, we'll take a step-by-step -step approach to preparing a model for rigging. First, we'll gently walk through mesh placement, orientation, and the importance of naming different parts of your model. We'll then simplify and merge parts to make the rigging process more manageable. Finally, we'll carefully analyze how the character should move to ensure a smooth rigging process. Let's proceed at a comfortable pace. Once we've completed the essential steps, we'll move on to placing the bones, taking the time to introduce and explain the different types of bones and their characteristics. We'll gently explore how all the parts of the rig work together, including the concepts of IK, inverse kinematics, and FK, forward kinematics, and discuss the pole vector and the challenges it presents. Next we'll carefully attach the bones to the character and show you two different methods for doing this. We'll also cover two methods for rigging a spring and how to place it in the armature chain. For specific movements, we'll utilize custom properties and drivers. Finally, we'll make the animation process smoother by using custom bone shapes and applying helpful constraints. All right, to get started, you can download the practice file for this episode completely free from our pages on ArtStation or Gumroad. The links are in the description. Download it and follow along with me. Let's get started. When we get a project from the modeler and open it for the first time, there are a few initial steps we're gonna take to get everything organized and ready. We're going to place the bottom of the model at the 000, zero point, or the world origin, of the coordinate system. To do this, select the mesh and switch to edit mode. You can then choose your selection type, vertex, edge, or face. I'm choosing vertex and heading to the bottom of the mesh. You have three options to do this. Press alt, and middle click. Then drag upwards to reach bottom view. Hold the tilde key to open the orthographic menu and select the viewport you need. Use numbers 1, 3, and 7 for front view, right view, and top view. Holding control with these numbers will give you the opposite views. Control 1 for back, control 3 for left, and control 7 for bottom view. These methods are designed to help you work more efficiently, so use the one you're most comfortable with. Now, we're going to go to bottom view and select those points carefully. Start by selecting one point, then press Alt and select the next point. Ensure the selected points are positioned exactly in the middle of the surface you're aiming for. Press Shift S to bring up the snap menu, which has different options we'll explore as needed. I'm choosing cursor to selected to move the cursor to the center of the selected points. Deselect and switch to object mode. Press Tab to toggle between the last two modes if you prefer. Press 3 to view the object from the right side. Each object has a yellow dot called the origin when selected which is the central point around which all transformations and deformations take place. Select all objects and right-click to go to Set Origin. Choose Origin to 3D Cursor, and the origin of all objects will move to the cursor's location. With the cursor at the 0, zero point, press Shift-S and select Cursor to World Origin to move the cursor back to the origin. Finally, choose Selected to Cursor to align all objects with the coordinate axis, so the bottom is positioned at the 0, zero point everything will be nicely aligned. This makes it simpler for the animator to work with the character and return it to its original position. Next, it's very important to set the orientation of the object to face the front view, which is negative Y in Blender. This helps ensure that Blender's options work more effectively and reduces potential issues. Let's set this up correctly from the beginning. Right now, our object is facing positive Y, so we need to rotate it 180 degrees. With the object selected, press R and then Z to rotate around the Z axis. Type 180 and press Enter. Now, your object should be correctly positioned and oriented in the scene. Go to the Set Origin menu and select Origin to Geometry to reset the origin of all objects to their initial state. Everything should be aligned properly now. 
Be sure to save your project at the end of each step. I'm going to go to the file menu now and choose Save As to create a new save. This way, you'll have your progress safely stored. The next step is naming, which is very important because it impacts many parts of the project. Both you and others who work on this project after rigging the character need to be able to find objects easily in the collection. Proper naming becomes especially important when using scripts, where even letter case can affect functionality. Here are my general rules for naming that you'll get to know during the course. Every item, from geometry to anything added later, needs a name. Names should be consistent. Each part's name should align with the bones, modifiers, and constraints assigned to it. Choose names that are easy to read and remember. Use logical naming to avoid confusion throughout the project. For spacing between words, I use dot and underscore. You'll learn how to use these as we continue. Let's make sure everything is named correctly. Let's start from the bottom. Select this part and press F2 to type in the name you want. I'm going to name it base underscore GEO. Next, select the part connecting the bottom and top and name it linkage. Now, let's focus on the top part of the object where most of the movement takes place. Since these components are separate, we need to join parts that will move together to simplify our work. Select all the relevant parts, right click, and choose join or use the shortcut Ctrl J. Do you understand why this occurred? When you receive a modeled object from the modeler, there might be modifiers left for you to adjust. You can find these in the modifier section, here. Since we don't need to make changes, apply each modifier to each object. You'll notice that other parts have their own specific modifiers active. Applying each individually can be time consuming. So to save time, select all objects, use Ctrl A in the apply menu, and choose visual geometry to mesh. You can also find this option under Object, Apply, then Visual Geometry to Mesh in the top menu. This will finalize all settings for the objects. Now we can join the parts. Select the ones that will move together. To test this, select these two pins first and use Shift plus S from the Snap menu to choose Cursor to Selected to move the cursor here. Then select all parts that should move together and in the Transform Pivot Point menu choose 3D Cursor so movements occur around the cursor. Press R for rotation and X to rotate around the X axis. Observe how the parts move together. Hold Alt and middle click to rotate around the object at once. Press Escape or right click to return to the original state. To join, right click and choose Join or use Ctrl J. Press F2 to rename this part. Fork block underscore GEO works well. Repeat for the other parts. Also these parts will move together. So we choose them and join together and we call it sidearm underscore geo. This part is a fabric and we call it backarm underscore geo. Here too, we need to join the separate parts together. And we name it elbow. Top sidearm. Top backarm. We join these together. And we name it Bridal underscore geo. Neck and shade underscore geo. This is also a lamp. There are two parts below that need to be named. This is top spring and this is bottom spring. Everything should be well organized now. We're almost at the exciting stage of placing bones. Rigging or placing bones helps simulate bones or skeletons for creating natural and advanced movements for your object. To start, take a few minutes to look at the object from a suitable distance to see the whole structure. Rotate around it and imagine how it will move. Visualize the main axes and connections in your mind. We'll go through this process step by step together. You can see that this part, called base GEO, is going to control the entire object. Above the base is the linkage, connecting it to the top part of the object. This linkage will rotate around the Z-axis, while the X and Y axes remain fixed, causing the upper parts to follow its rotation. The linkage is also enclosed, which prevents it from moving freely. Movement is constrained within its housing, while it can move along the Z axis. That's not necessary for now. Above the linkage, there's a pin connecting the fork block and back arm. This pin restricts their movement to rotation around the X axis. The fork block connects to the side arm, and from here, each component will have limitations on both sides. It's important to understand these connections. 
When the fork block rotates, the sidearm must also move, or the rotation won't work properly. The movement and rotation of the sidearm are influenced by the fork block's rotation and the spring connecting them. The backarm follows the same rules. The elbow connects both and limits their movement based on its own rotation. For now, focus on understanding the concept and logic behind these movements. You'll be able to create these movements easily with just a few clicks. The back forearm and side forearm connect to the elbow and manage force transfer to the bridle, with the spring regulating this force. At the top, the neck and shade rotate around the X and Z axes respectively. We've reviewed the main movements of the mesh, and now we're ready to start placing bones. Take your time to understand these concepts, and don't hesitate to watch the video again. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm here to help. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.